So let's talk about uh, setting up PayPal for our site. We've got half of the equation, which is our, our site set up. Now we need to set up PayPal. So let's open a new window and let's go to paypal.com. If you've already got a PayPal again, uh, maybe make a, a fake one for the moment just to see what I'm going to teach you and then apply that to your own page. But I'm going to assume we don't have one. Yes? Yeah, that's what we're going to do. So we've got the business one and the personal one. So um, we do want the business one, and it's also free, but it gives you more of these abilities to sell products. So here on the PayPal homepage, at the very top right we have sign up, but we're a business, aren't we? So we've got open a business account. Click on open a business account. Click get started today. This is going to go on, if you were to scroll down, it would tell you uh, the fees. Maybe we shouldn't quite skip this, but the fees here are, it's going to say, you know, you, you are going to be charged for your transactions, and there's always a middleman. Even though, you know, it's your own site and everything, there has to be someone that handles the money from the user into your bank account, into your PayPal account. Uh, PayPal is the middleman. And there's other ones. There's Google Wallet and uh, Authorize.net, etc., etc. We're using PayPal because it's been around for probably by now 20 years, 18 years or so. It's got number one security and all of that. No monthly fees. So here it's telling me 2.9% plus 30 cents per transaction and no monthly fee. So yeah, you, you're going to need to... you're going to Here's a little bit of calculations. Let's say I'm selling $321 worth of, worth of merchandise. PayPal is going to take their 2.3%, their which is $9. So out of your $231, PayPal is going to take $9, oh, plus that $0.30 cents flat. So they're going to take $9.61. And uh, honestly, that's the way it is. There are other ones that perhaps are only 1% but you've got a monthly fee of $100. Maybe there are some that have 0% transactions, but then it's $1,000 a year to use their system. There's many ways to do this, of course, so I'm just showing you one possibility. PayPal. And if you, when you set up your PayPal, you also have the ability to get for free the little card swiper. So PayPal has their own little swiper. You just say, give me one, and they give it to you. And then you put it into your phone, and you'll be able to take credit cards on the spot. 2.7% per swipe. If you let what a customer decide to pay, still a piece of that? Yeah, for every kind of transaction. So, so you, But what do you mean credit card? They will be doing credit card through our site. As opposed to the PayPal account. Yeah, that's what I meant. Instead of PayPal, PayPal is the middleman, but they're still going to accept a credit card. Okay. The point is, a person, when we set this up fully, does not need a PayPal account. If they just put their credit card number without a PayPal account, done. But they're still going to take their cut. At the end, they say, create a PayPal account, even if you put a credit card number, then in the end, you have to collect your PayPal. No, you don't have to. It recommends you do because you might want to buy something later on. Well, let me get back to that because we're getting off track. But uh, like I said, I've done this before and I know that you oh, can. It's annoying me. That's what it is. In the end, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can create an account, like they agree and create an account, that's mm -hmm. you create a PayPal account. It could. So you on it. I'm not going to. I'm going to get back no, to I mean, it because, like I said, in the real world, <laughs> in the real world, we will so be able to set this up so that you don't have PayPal. to create the account. Huh? In the real world, we can set this up so that this won't appear, and a person will just put their credit card number, and that's it. The name I'm going to get to a name and next screen. 
Let's follow along and we'll see. Okay, thank you. So here, we have all of these abilities. We just need to create the account. So I'm going to continue here, get started. And here we've got regular PayPal, which would be free, and that's all we need. Or we can do the PayPal Pro, which will allow you to do even more things. So this is the thing, again, early on when the class started a month ago, uh, two months ago, I, I was saying from the beginning, are you sure you want to be your own entrepreneur? Are you sure you want to be your own store? You could make profit selling off on Amazon and their infrastructure and Etsy and all of that. And if you go at it alone, we've, you know, we've taken, what is this already, like eight weeks setting this all up. There's still more to learn. And one of the things here is we can use the completely free one, which is the one we're going to, or we can pay, set up the $30 one, $30 a month one. Again, you can look in on what the benefits are of that if they would be useful to you. But we're going to go for the, for the free one, continue for $0 a month. Um, okay, so then enter an email to sign up or log in. So uh, this is the part where we're going to try to put in a fake email address. So I'm going to put in uh, Victor's Bakery Eastlake at gmail.com. So don't use mine, of course, because it'll say that's already in use. Make this up. Maybe just put a number two at the end or a 99 or something. So make that up. And then uh, put in that code. And we'll select next. And then there's some stuff to fill in here. Again, you can make it up. Enter your business contact info, so first name, last name, business name, phone. Again, I'm going to make all of this up. Street address. You can make that up. I'm going to put something there. So you want to agree and continue.
What type of business is it? Most likely individual sole, sole proprietorship. Now this gets us into the questions about do I need a merchant account, a bank account, merchant account? Do I need a business license? Do I need an export license? And you have to answer that. I can't answer that. What is the product you're selling? If I'm doing Victor's Bakery, uh, I'm a local business, but I'm going to be shipping throughout the U.S. So maybe I need some sort of license to export, you know, food. I don't know. Um, in short, this is really something that you need to speak with an accountant with, that they would advise you the best. But usually here, you would you would need an individual or sole proprietorship. You, know, you could go down to City Hall and I think like for $45, get a business license that lasts for five years, and then you're officially a business. And that is a sole proprietorship. These other ones, well, they're more complex and you know what they are if you see them. If you don't know what any of these are, you, don't, you probably don't have it. So for us, we're going to select individual or sole proprietorship. That's either that we went all the way to City Hall and, and set it up or that simply I didn't but I'm just selling it from my garage. Again, you'll need to talk to your uh, tax representative to really understand what you need to do here because now you're going to be your own business. What, and you're going to be dealing with money, and that's usually when governments care. In what category does it best fit? So uh, this is a bakery, which is, I suppose, food. Do we have food in here? Food retail. That's fine. Subcategory. I'll do specialty and miscellaneous. Estimated total monthly sales, not sure. So I'll start with the lowest number. Do a business website. Yeah, let's say at a, uh, eventually I have, I have my website. And then continue. Ooh, website doesn't exist. Okay, no problem. I'm not going to put anything there. I guess I can't fake that one. Or is it required? No. Yeah, so I guess I couldn't put a fake address. Continue. This information is required to verify your identity. This helps us keep the PayPal community safe as well as meet government regulations. Mm. We might get stuck here actually. that up and see what happens. Hmm. Try that. What's that? Yes, yes. It accepted it, so try this. If you're if the social security I put 1123 and then the birthday was 0101 1978. I guess that's a person. Oh, I hope so. Huh? I hope I hope not. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. I wonder if that really was checking some sort of social security database or just no, writing it for the government. 
<laughs> what takes purpose? All right, who sees something different than my page here? Interesting. Uh, let me just see what yours looks like. I'm curious. But if you get to this point, it's saying he's set up and all of this stuff. Yours looks like that, not like mine. Just wait a moment. Um, if yours looks like mine, let's proceed. And I think on the next screen, then this one will look like yours. Just a moment here. Uh, let me see what we've got. So payment setup, make a button. No, we don't need that. This would create. This method would create a checkout with PayPal button, but this is usually for sites that are not WordPress. These are for sites like a plain Dreamweaver site. That they would give us the code, we add it to our site. We're using a plugin, so if you see this, you don't you don't need a button. We've got invoices, that's useful. PayPal and eBay are actually, I believe PayPal owns eBay or vice versa, one of those two. What's that? They're going to split. They're going to split? Oh, okay. But um, they have a connection. And then right here, here's where you can go to get the reader. If Again, if you don't see the screen, don't worry. We'll find it elsewhere. But if you're on this screen here, I'm going to look at account setup. And on this one, hmm. Well, those of you that are not on the screen, what happens if you do you have a home button? Yeah, but I'll do this later, Debbie. I'll do this later. Okay, if you see that, I'll do this later, click it. Where is it at? Like at the bottom somewhere? Okay, select I'll do this. Now we're done. Okay. I'll do this later. Okay, so we're all on this kind of screen. Okay, so um, this is about confirm your email. We made one up, so we can't quite do it. But notice here, this is to accept payments, you'll need to do this. Um, so that's going to be that they send you an email, you click that link, it takes you back here, it's confirmed. We can't do it, so don't worry, but you'll need to do that. Uh, then we've got to link your bank account. We can't do this at the moment either, but what happens is if we don't set this up, we can still start to collect payments. It's just that our money will be stored on our PayPal account. Eventually then, we want to use it in the real world. We could then have that money deposited to our PayPal account with a bank transfer, or we can get PayPal to, to, to mail us a check, or we can get a credit card, a debit card from PayPal, so we can use our money from PayPal. Uh, so you do want to link your bank account also so that it is fully set up and you have the full capabilities. But we have different ways then to get the money out of PayPal into our hands. Yeah? Yeah, the, I have the PayPal uh, MasterCard. It works pretty well. Oh, cool. No annual fees, 1% cash back. Cool. The one thing we can do uh, at this point, and then we'll look at other items, is uh, right here, make your business name clear for customers. Remember a moment or earlier when we went to that PayPal checkout screen, uh, it was kind of generic a bit. So if we go here, make your business name clear, this will allow us to change that screen. So when a person goes to that screen or when they look at their uh, billing statements, Mine says, this is the text that will appear. And this depends on the person's credit card. Um, some of them will only display 11 characters, and some of them perhaps up to 19. So someone, when they look at their bank statement, their billing statement, it'll say PayPal, and then this name that we write here, Victor's Bake. 
That's what fits for mine. You can change that. Make it Drew's B A K R Y. Bakery. And some credit cards will actually let you show you more. Up to 19 characters. Do we have spaces in there? Yes. The one of 11 characters is pretty limiting, keep it concise, but the one of 19 you might have some more leeway. I put also apostrophe and the space. We continue. No symbols, okay. No apostrophe. But yes, spaces. All right, so these other ones, like I said, you do the, you'll need to do the email on your own and link your bank account. Let's look at other things here. Uh, if you click, you should have a home button. Click on the home button. This is how you can get back to the screen if you lose it. We've got this money screen. We don't have any money yet. We don't have any money saved on our PayPal accounts. Transactions would show you our, our sales and such, and you can really organize it monthly, quarterly, search, all of that stuff. We'll have a list of the customers that have bought stuff. A lot of good reporting from where in the world and all of that stuff. So does this happen right away so you can see all your transactions? Yeah. Or is it it's right away. Whenever payments are made and they're processed, you'll have you'll, it'll also show you pending and paid for and rejected and all of that. It's it's uh, pretty fast. Let's look at tools. So we've got a, a bunch of tools. And other things like advice to grow your business. They've changed this recently, so I need to orient myself also. But we need to go to a specific screen somewhere here. There's a screen that we can... Looking for what? Fraud? No, I'm looking for... I'm looking for the screen where we've got all of our settings to customize the checkout process. Well, you guys can maybe help me out too. I'm looking for that... Um, it's going to be a screen full... Okay, so, okay. picture of you on top. Business set, settings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's the one. So let's do this. If you click on your picture at the top right, is it the same? I, I want to look at here profile and settings. It might be some other button here. But it looks like they've put it up here by your by your user icon. So at the top right, click on that and then profile and setup. You're in business settings. No, profile, profile and settings. The one with the little gear.
so this is what I was looking for. This has got a bunch of uh, sections on the left side. This is something that you would want to go in. Uh, for example, the email is unconfirmed and such. It is recommended. There's a little tax section here. Uh, Social Security number. When this is fully set up properly, you want that plugged in. If you are a business, that has gone through the process of City Hall and getting a business license and such, you have an employer identification number, your EIN, so you want to add that in, uh, which would give you also an ITIN, an individual tax identification number, you want to fill that in. Again, this is how legitimate do you want to be, and in my recommendation, you want to be as legitimate as possible. Have a business account, have a business checking account, you know, all of that stuff, so that you're able to do your taxes properly, you know, avoid audits, all of that stuff, which again gives me back to the point of, are you sure you want to do this? Because now you've got all of this, more of this stuff to deal with. Setting up half of the equation, you know, eight weeks, five weeks, six, seven weeks, is the website. And the other part of the equation we're talking about is, well, the, mon the, the, the monetary aspect. So I'm not changing anything here. If we go look at my money, this is another screen where you can set up your bank account so that you can get your money transferred over. I'm not doing anything there under settings. This is a useful screen because we've got Checkout settings, manage payment settings for small transactions, and your mobile checkout. So let's see. Somewhere here we've got the screen where we can customize our checkout screen. No, but uh, we're, we're about to get that. Yeah, they've changed things recently, but anyway, let's do this. Let's go to my selling tools. Here it is. Um, under my selling tools, website preferences. Custom payment pages, those two right there, which we'll look at right now. Custom payment pages, set up PayPal payment pages to look like my website. Here's where we can go in to edit what does that screen look like when someone is on the PayPal screen to buy a product. And then if a person cancels or finishes a, a transaction, we can have a page in there too. Let's see what that one looks like. Let's click on Custom Payment Pages Update. I honestly don't know, and I don't know what, what to tell you. I would really talk to a CPA or talk to your organization because they, they'll be able to give you a better answer. I haven't dealt with nonprofits to really give you an answer, so I don't want to give the wrong advice. Just say I don't. I don't know. Right. I would check with oh, someone more knowledgeable. Yeah, I was assuming that um, PayPal has the tax for you on No, um, we could. We could have PayPal do it for us, but our site, the WP Commerce, okay. has the spot there to add taxes before right. we get it into PayPal. Okay. 
So under Customize Your Payment Page, we can look at the options. We can have more than one page. We've got one, and that's all we need at the moment. So we've got one of the we've got one checkout page here from PayPal. We can look at its options tab. Notice some things you can turn on. Gift messages. We we already have something like that in the shopping in the WP Commerce already. But here's another place for allowing people to write up to 100, 150 character message uh, to be added to your order. You can set up gift receipts, gift wrap. If you've got a phone number set up in PayPal, we can have it displayed on screen. And a survey, which you've already got on our site. Promotional emails, which is another can of worms to be able to capture people's email addresses and maybe send them monthly newsletters and such, but that requires something uh, more set up like the ability to unsubscribe. So those are some options that you might want to set up. I'm going to select back to my profile. Which takes it way back there. Well, we need to go back to profile and settings. Back to profile and setting my selling tools. Website preferences. Let's take a quick look at that. I guess if we return to the website, set the option back to the website, you can have a screen that, that for download, downloading your digital group. You, you could. A page for it. You could. You could, but I don't think it's necessary because the email that that our website will send people will already have the link to download. But you could. So. Yeah. To back to your website, you have to type in HTTP or just hashtag just like before. You you mean right here? Yeah. You I would type the HTTP also. To your page. Yeah. Yes. So here we're saying. Auto return. When do you, it says, uh, brings you users back to your website immediately after payment completed. Auto return applies to PayPal website payments, including buy now, donation, subscriptions. This is PayPal website payments. So this actually is not as useful as it could be because it applies to PayPal website payments, which are like the buy, the buy now button. I'm not sure if it'll apply to ours, but here you can turn it on and say when someone buys, then take them to this address over here, like hunter'sbakery.com slash thankyou.html. You know, we could direct people to a certain link, or maybe like download.html. We could direct people back to a page after they've purchased something. It's already got it built in. There's a version of it already built in when you go through the transaction, however. Payment data transfer optional, but we'll do it in a different way. Uh, encrypted website. This doesn't apply to us because it's talking about if you add the buy now button to your website you then turn on encryption 
So that means we don't have encryption, we don't have the security feature turned on on our site. We didn't buy the SSL certificate, so this would be detrimental for us to turn on. The security is happening on PayPal anyway, it's not happening on our site, so we don't need that. We can display a phone number. When you activate this option, your customers will be asked to include a phone number. So you can turn it on optional, on required, or off. So if you, you also want to capture people's phone number in case you need to get in contact with them, you can turn that on and make it required. You're, you're saying that the encryption one you turn on after you get the SSL? Yes. This encryption works after you get SSL, yes. So then at the bottom, Express Checkout, which I'm surprised to see this actually because as I recall, this was the place where we could activate when we're trying to check out, to simply check out and not create a PayPal account. What I mean is that when we when we go over to this screen, we should have the option of simply putting in our credit card number instead of creating an account. And as I recall, that was here under Express Checkout. But now I see that it says, if you support the German funding method GiroPay and bank transfer. So it's a little confusing. I'm going to turn it on, and then I can we can test it. Is it possible to say you can make that simple and easy, but you could only get to the pro? Maybe. Maybe that, that could that could happen, but it might be buried in some other screen because, as I said, they, they've, they've changed this. This whole new layout here, this is completely new. It wasn't here a year ago. So, I know it changed between one day and the next when I was trying to set this up. Oh. So, like I said, I, I know I've set these items before, and things change. So. It's uh, annoying to then figure out what changed, but in here somewhere there's going to be that. But I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, and we'll see what happens. Now one of the things that we need to remember to turn on also in our site, we, we set up IPN, and here's where we need to activate it in PayPal. Instant payment notifications. So I'm still on this my selling tools and inside of the get paid instant payment notifications. Integrate PayPal payment notifications with your website. This is so PayPal communicates back to your website. So here under IPN I can go to update Choose IPN settings. Actually, that needs a uh, a little more setup. What's the URL? Well, that's what I'm saying. We need some more setup because the the address hmm.
we have to get back to that because the address, this is going to be a specific address that the WP Commerce creates for us. And it's somewhere. Yeah, so uh, I can't quite do it, but I have um, I have a um, I've set this up before for a for an online class. I have these instructions already set up on a video, which I'll, I'll load up in a moment. But uh, again, you see, so I've done this before. You don't have to do it that often, but when you set it up the first time, then it works. Um, so I apologize if some of these things don't seem like, you know, I don't have it filled in just yet, but I do have a video uh, where it explains it all. Uh, question? Back there? No. Okay. So let me, uh, let me do something here, just one moment.